Well, that's a new one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Central. We want to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. I want to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I know most of you have probably already heard, but my wife had surgery one day last week. I forget. Was that Friday? Yeah, Lord, it seems like two years ago. Uh, and uh, no cancer. Everything looks good. Praise God. So we are believing for a speedy, speedy recovery for her. And uh, we have been, uh, my wife, I think the, before she, right before she went into surgery, we were praying, I guess we're driving to the hospital, and we were praying for Janora. Is that the right one? Thank you. I always get that bunch. That bunch is hard to keep up with. But Janora, Janora, if you're watching this morning, honey, we are praying for you. Amen. Your church family is praying for you. They, I think they told her they thought she had lymphoma, and the devil is a liar. Hey, man, glory to God. You obviously have a, a, an announcement. Oh, wait. We're, now we're, it's dueling announcements. 28 Thanksgiving basket lists left. Amen. I'm going to take a couple of those. <laughs> hey, it's on. Cool. So today, right after service, their men are having a fundraiser. It's a barbecue fundraiser. It's going to be brisket, chicken, and sausage. And a bunch of other stuff. And for those that are interested, we do have a meatless option. We think about everybody. Hey, so y'all come man. on back there. It's donation only. Eat what you can eat and we'll enjoy it. Hallelujah. I can eat. How about you? Okay. Well, you don't have to. I will. And then we've got a, a pies for sale. I think there, there are a few out there. Um, and then I'll just read, read the opportunities. We've got a, a senior uh Christmas benefit, Thanksgiving outreach. Is that next week? Wow. Man, this is crazy. Time is flying. And uh, everything else that's going on here. Praise the Lord. Man, I love you guys. Good to see you. Why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Wow. See, I, had, I was out last weekend, wasn't I? I'm just kind of trying to remember when's the last time I saw some of y'all. Praise God. But folks, I just, I want to, I want us just to just take a couple of, uh, of seconds here and let's just thank God for his faithfulness. Has he been faithful to you? Amen. Amen. He's still faithful. I said he's still faithful. Father, we just bless your name. You are a good, good God. You're a good father. And Lord, I thank you that you watch over your word and your promises to us to perform it. Master, I give you praise. I give you praise for your faithfulness, praise for your love for me. Lord, you have, you have demonstrated, the word says you've demonstrated your love for me in that when I was still in sin, you died for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to lift our hands and say you're a good God and I praise you. Today, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will Help us to enthrone, to enthrone, to build a platform with our praise today that miracles, signs, and wonders can, can operate in our lives, in us and through us, is my prayer today. You're a good God. Lord, encourage your people today. Lift the burden today is my prayer. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Folks, I want to give you a word this morning. I think it's Peter said this, that you can cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. I want you to do me a favor this morning. I want you to find two people, look them dead in the eye, and I want you to tell them God cares for you. Amen. Go ahead.
Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. One more time. Father, let your kingdom come. kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us, forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. All yours. All yours. All yours. All yours. The kingdom. The
moment. God, we thank you, Father God, Lord, that you won't fail. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me, God. Lord, come on. It's time to repent. God, we're sorry, Lord God, where we walked away from you, Lord. We're sorry, God, where we lost faith in you, God, that we didn't trust you, Father. We just ran to the next quick fix, God. Lord, whether that be pharmaceutical, whether that be a person, God, Lord, we repent in this moment, Father God, and we lay ourselves on the altar this morning, God. And Lord, say, we trust you, God. I trust you, Father. I put my faith in you, God. You will never fail me. You will never fail me. Speak the name of Jesus over you in your hurting, in your. 
sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name Cause it's all that I can do In desperation I seek heaven And pray this for you I pray for your healing That circumstances would change
the power yours is the glory forever amen and yours is the kingdom yours is the power
Press in, just press in. Would you make that a prayer this morning? Lord, Father, forgive us where we've grieved you. Lord, we want you, let your reign, let your reign, your Holy Spirit reign, just, just flood this house today. I thank you that there's a hedge over us here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ora me secla aderebo shindikia, le setra laba akrama adi secro bahakia, hele menendere me eshenkla bohodi mora secla hatia, ha secla andele me eya. Honde la resecla ma shode le berosia, ma hande la socra mandila ma rasaclea, helele edo socro shilando siclama, ma orele, hemando rasecla no shendere cla sotia, hemando se la badu recle edo yama, ama ale yamo resecla han shi de besicla, rahatelema, roque silando rima hayidia, minda lo racadibo, reset le ede. Ke ya mahashi debe ko maha ne la do rehesi ma ale ko masila do shinanando krasia halelando rabo yelando sikam andia himananando ala kasi la so shidile romet la la do kraba ayodia so rakaya la do hoshila sila ma ado mare ko yele yando sila ko si mahandia hendo yala asa hamandi la krosi Nama shila dura, he ma ado ye ma asok la hadia, rekando ma ayela do rosi, medo ho kama ade yana, ra asola do rebo kondi rasotasa, mandara vai kananando rebelana do sasho, hayela do, mandara ka ade ya mo rosorakia, mande yo mo rosa, shora de kananando so ye ma a, madoro bo ho ya. Hey, ya doso, kama ada ya roso shia. Hey, la doka ya dosa doya. Modi la rosa ka adoya. Atela do, morakasa shoda. 
sende dori mo dala asande da bo yere si I'm seated on the right hand of your Father and my God. Hear me today. Worship, worship, worship. Your feelings have robbed you this morning. But I am a God that's always present, especially in the habitation that I builded for my spirit by you. So look up today, saith the Holy Ghost, this Holy God who has called you out of the darkness that you walked into the marvelous light of my presence. Oh, that you might worship me in spirit and in truth again, that you might not render to the fleshly desires that you felt this morning, but the spiritual desires that I placed in you ought to lift up those hands immediately and begin worshiping and praising me for the beauty of my holiness that I poured out on this service this morning. I've spoke to you. You've danced. Some of you have danced. But most of you have not danced this morning, but my music is still playing, saith the Holy Ghost. For Christ is being manifested in here before your very eyes in your very presence. For my spirit has ordained and sanctified this household to offer, amen, those things that are surety in my presence for you. But lift up your hands again, my children. I have not forsaken you. I have not cast you down for anything, saith the Holy Ghost. For I am for you, the Bible says, that, that my word, amen, says today that I, I have not forsaken you and I never will. For I am here in your presence because of my presence is here. Therefore, lift up those holy hands and begin to magnify me one more time. It has already been said this morning by the, by the Spirit, amen, my Spirit is here to perform everything that you have need of. Look up, look up and live today, saith the Lord of heaven. For I am thy confidence, I am thy strong and great reward, saith the Lord. For I will manifest myself in every need today. I know there's a darkness coming, but there's still a light, hallelujah to God, burning in this place today for the oil of God is being poured out. Trim those lamps today, saith the Holy Ghost. And allow that all to fill and refresh every lampstand that I've called and ordained, saith God. For I am here, saith the Lord, and where I am there is everything needed and performed through the great power of my word and spirit. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on now. If God's talking to you, you must respond. You must respond. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come here just a minute. Before that word was released, Candy came and shared this dream that she had. And I, believe I, woke, it's... I woke up this morning, and my, actually, it was so real that my chest was hurting <laughs> because it was. I and I realized eventually through the dream that it was about the rapture. But the first part, I was kind of sitting, and we were in church. It was an extra church service, and I was sitting in 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 the service and. There were people up dancing up front. Some of the people were up dancing and, you know, praising God up front. And some of us were sitting in our seats. <laughs> and what we noticed was I looked around like, wait, the people who were dancing, they were gone. I don't know where they went. But we didn't even notice it. We were sitting in our seats, you know, just going about, you know, thinking thoughts, whatever, whatever the thoughts may be. We were present, but we didn't even realize <laughs> that they were gone. And I was like, hey. Where'd they go? They maybe went, I, you know, I had someone tell me they maybe went out and ran around the block. They were so excited. And I'm like, I don't think so. I just don't feel like they did. And I'm searching and searching. I'm like, guys, where'd they go? Eventually, I'm like, I think the rapture happened. They're like, no, because I would have been there. I would have been there. It couldn't have happened. And so I'm like, no, but where are they? They're not just gone. We have to realize that we don't know when God's going to come. And we can't just be complacent. That was the hardest part because I got the flip side and then I got to go back in time and then see the people who went out for the rapture. And it was a little boy sitting and he was like, look. And you saw the sky divide <laughs> and God come down and everybody out there was excited. It was so, I mean, they were praising God. They were so excited. But we were sitting inside the church thinking, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Don't wait. Don't wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. 
Folks, I believe God's talking to us. This. Come on, give him a hand. Don't patty cake. If you're going to bless his name, he's worthy. He's worthy. I believe the Lord's speaking to this congregation today. We got to get serious about this. Come on. Yeah, we've all got stuff we're carrying here today. We've all got emotions that we're dealing with. But folks, let me tell you something. There's going to come a day when all that's going to be a distant memory. <laughs> come on. Amen. The Bible says Jesus embraced the cross for the joy that was set before him. Folks, we've got a hope this morning in Christ. I want to tell you whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through this morning, Jesus is enough. I said, Jesus is enough. He is worthy of all of my praise. He is worthy. Amen. I don't care what it looks like today. Lift your hands. Come on. All in this building today, lift your hands. And I want you to give him thanks. Come on. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Lord, we're going to magnify you. No matter what the emotional is, no matter what the stress is, I'm going to say thank you because you are worthy. Thank you because you've done enough. Thank you that you saved me today. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. Just give him, give him, give him opportunity. Give him a give him give him time. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just, I just keep hearing the word, this season, this season. This season is coming to pass. Your season of weeping is going to give way to a season of rejoicing. Your, your season of dryness is going to give way to a season of, of a refreshing rain and fruitfulness. Your season of barrenness. This, this time, this season of barrenness, when you, you feel like nothing is growing, nothing is, is, is working out, that season is passing away. And there is a season of reaping, of productive, <laughs> of provision. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This season that you're in is changing. The seasons are changing. It's more than just the rainy season coming in with this fall weather. There, there is a, a, a season that's shifting right now. Thank you, Jesus. And you've got a part to play in that shift. You just need to stop right what you're doing and just say, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> it's not always going to be this way. Come on. Somebody, 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 God's trying to produce in you a hope that produces a faith that, that you're going to overcome all of this mess. Come on. 
Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And sometimes you just got to take a step out in faith and say, I'm going to thank you anyway. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you that crazy praise this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you're going to get down to pray one day and you're going to hear him whisper in your ear, Behold, I'm coming. I'm coming quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Holy Spirit, we want to respect your, your ministry here. We want, to, we, all, we, we want to honor you. So, Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us where we've grieved, where we've grieved you, where we've offended you by our obstinance, by our, our selfishness and self-will and, and self-importance. Lord, there's nothing more important than you. So, Holy Spirit, I just surrender now to you. I surrender my everything to you. Come on, church. You've offended him. You need to ask for forgiveness. Just tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to do that. I don't think I'm more important than you, even though sometimes I act like it. Lord, forgive me. Come on. That's what he's after. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of promise. My God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Thank you for that blood, Lord, that cleanses me, that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. <laughs> I plead that blood, the benefits of your blood. Oh, yes. My Mighty God, mighty God. Come on. They're, they're just, there's that cleansing stream just, just washing over this house right now. You need to say thank you. Thank you for the blood. <laughs> thank you for that blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that blood. Come on. There ought to be a knowing down in your knower right now. That There's a stream. <sighs> my God, my God, my God, my God. Thank you for your blood. <laughs> oh, come on. Somebody just needs to join me right there. Every time I say thank you for the blood, there's just another wave right there. Just thank you for your blood. Lord, you washed me. You cleansed me. Lord, I, my, though my sins be as scarlet, they're white as snow because of your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for forgiving. Thank you for washing. I thank you that I was a... I was on my way to hell, but the blood of Jesus has brought me near. I once was far away, but thank God for the blood today that has brought me near. Near. I have access. I have forgiveness. I have restoration because of the blood of Jesus. You who once were far away from God, far from His promise, have been brought near by the blood. <sighs> Holy Ghost, teach us, teach us. 
let the revelation of that truth just explode in our spirit, man. That I have access to all of the promises of God because of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The words that we were just received by the Holy Spirit we had message in tongues interpretation and and a word of exhortation from a, a dream that God has an he has an expectation of your life amen he expects you to be more than just a spectator in this in this in this journey That we ought to be actively engaged in, in the things that are going on. Not, not, not in, in, in the, this earthbound realm where there's protest and there's unrest and there's fear and all this stuff. But that our job is to be active in the spirit realm. Are you hearing me? That we are to be active in this, in this unseen realm. That our prayers make a difference. Are you hearing me? That, that what, what, we, what God is doing in us. Amen. He's doing through us. That I, I, I loved it when you guys begin to sing that part of the verse. I pray for your family. That circumstances will change. Come on, y'all. I, I, I can't remember the rest of the words, but there's there's just there's there's something that happens when the church engages in, in this in this unseen battle. Because folks, we're in a battle. I said we're in a battle. You know, man, I've been fighting this week. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've been carrying a load. I'm like, Jesus, I need you to show up. And glory to God. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm a man of faith. I, I, I trust God, but I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting the report that I got. I, I thought, man, we've got this long protracted battle out here ahead. We're going to be fighting this thing called cancer, and it's going to be... You know, I just, I was, I was ready. Come on, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, you're, you're praying, but you're getting ready. Man, man this is going to be rough. And then all, but God, but God, but God came and laid those, those reports out in faith. But still in the back of our minds sometime, come on, I'm talking to somebody in here. In the back of our mind, we're like, well, yeah, you know, I'm praying, but, you know, i got to be prepared for the reality. <laughs> God, forgive me <laughs> for my unbelief. The reality is we serve a God that is in the now. He's a right now God. And I'm not going to pass on, but I, I want to stop and give him praise for touching and healing. Come on. That cancer is just a thing. The name of Jesus is above every name. Yeah. If you don't have your miracle yet, you hold on. I'm going to praise him because he's the help of my countenance. I'm going to praise him because he's God in the mountain and he's still God in the valley. And when we release that kind of praise on the earth, it shifts things in the spiritual realm. See, that's the purpose of the attack upon our lives at times is to, to get us to shut down. How many of you have experienced that? No, I mean, when the, when the attack came, instead of jumping and shouting and praising, you're just like... Ooh. Somebody's got to get up and just say, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on. this is how I fight my battles. Come on. Amen. <laughs> no, 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 no. It ain't over till it's over, honey. I said it ain't over till it's over. And, and if you got the, the, the diagnosis, and, and uh, as, as we're praying for Janora, you know, oh, that's a, you know, lymphoma, that's a, a scary word. But let me tell you something. It's just a name, and it is submissive to the name of Jesus. And if the church will rise up in faith and say, no, 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 not a part of this body. Your voice, I, I just had the thought, you know, we need Janora singing, but folks, we need you singing. 
your voice in the earth is important. I'm not talking about up here on the platform. I'm talking about released into the atmosphere in this region. Jesus is still Lord. Jesus is still Lord. Jesus is still Lord. That whether it's cancer or it's addiction or it's depression, Jesus is still Lord. Amen. Whether it doesn't matter if it's hopeless, it's never hopeless because we have a God of all hope. It's not over. It's not over. And I just, I want to stir up your faith this morning. I want to stir up your faith this morning. Hallelujah. I, I, in Ephesians chapter 5, I've got a, a whole bunch of notes up there. I kind of really got a feeling like we're not even going to go there. But I do want to at least look at this verse because, folks, it's something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes I prepare and I get the direction when I get up here and start, <laughs> start flowing, right? <clears throat> Put Ephesians 5, 16 up there, or 15, verse 15. And we'll we'll kind of get a run and start. So be careful how you live. So the, uh, before we go anywhere, the word so right there is, is, is a conjunctive adverb. It's, it's like a therefore. And if you go back to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is praying for the church. They have revelation in what really God has done for them. Revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Amen. That we would know what the hope of our calling is. How high, how wide, how deep. Come on. That we would really begin to comprehend what he's done in us and for us. And in chapter 2, then, he, pray, he, he continues to go on that same vein. We've been seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principalities, and that's wonderful. And then he gets down to the end of that second chapter, and he says, we're being made a habitation of God by His Spirit, that God has always intended to live inside of you, to make His home inside your heart. And in chapter 3, he's going to go ahead. He's going he's to continue that thought about who we are in Christ. In chapter 4, he's going to kind of come out of the ether or realm and he's going to get down here and he said, God gave apostles and the prophets and evangelists, the pastors and teachers, amen, to perfect the saints. Then in chapter 5 here, he throws in, but because of all of that, so be careful how you live. Hello? Don't you live like the godless. Don't you live like somebody that doesn't have a father that loves you and cares for you. Don't you just walk around and do your own thing and, and act like someone that, that God is not concerned about. He loves you. And then there's three contrasts. So, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like people who are wise. Don't be fooled that, that there is a, 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 remember, chapter 1, he's praying, God, give them revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. Be wise. Let the Spirit of God reveal to you what, what the, the capacity, the unlimited capacity of God's love inside of you can, can accomplish. Let me tell you something. You are a lot bigger deal than you give yourself credit for. So don't be, don't be fools. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. The fool lives like there's no God. The fool just goes about his business and, you know, trying to uh, uh, gather in all he or she can gather. Don't, don't live like that, he said, but, but live like those who are wise. What does that mean? <laughs> live like you're going to give an answer to the God that, the, that saved you. Live like he's actually done something in your life. Come on, has he saved you? You ought to live that way. Has he delivered you? Stay, stay free. Has he healed you? Praise him because he's a healer. Hit, hit, hit that next verse, please. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Now, the word there is re, it, it's, it's redeem. Redeeming the time, King James says. It's, it's, it's buying back these missed opportunities. How many of you remember before you got saved? How, how many years did you waste before you were born again? Th this verse is saying you need, to, you need to redeem that time. You need to buy that back. You need to be, it, it, it carries with it the idea of precision. Redeeming the time. Being strategic in how you live. Why? Because the days are evil. Is there anybody in here want to debate with me whether or not we're living in an evil day? 
Come on, bring it. You want to debate? I'm with you. I'll be your huckleberry. Let me tell you something. These days are rough. There's, there, there's, there's, some, there's some, some scary times just ahead of us. And that's why we need to be strategic in how we live our lives, how we conduct our lives. We need to be purposeful in how we live. Because the days are evil. Next one. Don't act thoughtlessly. Here's another contrast. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. Understand. If you don't understand, pray. Pray through. Get the mind of God. Live holy. Hit it again. And don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. What's he say? He, he, contrast it. it don't be, don't be a fool. Be wise. Don't live thoughtlessly. Know what God's will is. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That he, he's, this is an orator's, um, Paul is an order. He's, you know, he, he is doing this in order to bring you to the crescendo so that you would understand that this is, this is God's purpose for your life. You have lived for yourself. How's that working for you? He's bringing you to a point to where you understand there's only one thing that's important. That the purpose of man is the glory of God. That I'm to live for His glory. That my life is to produce for Him a reflection of all that He's done for me. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then He's going to tell us how to accomplish these. I like the King James here. Switch to the King James, if you will, because... It works for my text. There you go. You got to talk to yourself. Come on. You got to talk to yourself. You got to speak. And it's not this, this yourselves is not just you by yourself, but it's to each other. Speaking to yourselves. Talk to yourselves. In psalms and hymns and spiritual talk. Talk about what he's done. Talk about what he's going to do. Let let faith begin to fill. Come on, if you begin to pronounce and announce who he is and what he's doing, I believe that my God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. I believe that my God has given me revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm going to understand just how much he loves me, how much, he loves, how much he's done in me. Come on, y'all. Speak to yourself. Psalms, that's, that's, that's the, 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 the already given revelation. Hymns, amen, those are testimonials. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. I love, I love, I love it. He healed my body. Get that helicopter going. You know, I, I, when Bethany first, I've said this before, when she started leading worship for the youth, I, I, played, I played guitar for the youth department one night. That's, it, that's the end of that. You ain't getting around them kids. I'll go to jail. <clears throat> I don't have time for foolishness when it's in the, we're getting into the presence of God, right? But where is I going? Oh, so she just dove right off into worship. I'm like, honey, you can't do that. Us old folks, we don't just go right into worship. We got to work our way into it. You got to get, you got to get your praise on, right? So you, you think about the old songs, right? Um, you know, there's power in the blood. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about what he's done. Right? Songs of testimony. That's hymns. Talking about his greatness, his goodness. The, those are testimonials. And then spiritual songs. We're going to talk about who he is. And about my love and my desire for intimacy with him. Come on. It's, you see, it's all good. But there's a purpose behind it all. We don't sing just to sing, to take up time so pastor can get warmed up to preach. Come on. We're singing with purpose and with intentionality to create an environment where the Spirit of God is, is, is hovering over the house. Because whatever He hovers over, He's about to work in. 
Oh, if you just get... Come on, when His presence comes, when that cloud would come over the tabernacle, everybody knew God was there. And when God shows up, He doesn't come to play with your emotions. He comes to do a work. Are you hearing me? So I sing my way into His presence. I have a message I used to preach years ago called the Glory Producers, where we, we produce an environment where the presence of God just impregnates that environment. Because before God does anything, there's got to be glory there. You, you, you see, I mean, you know, when, 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 when God showed up on the mountain and the mountain shook and thundered and smoke and all that stuff, everybody knew, oh, Lord, we's in trouble now. Come on. That's because they didn't have revelation of, of, of His love and care for them. And it's why in our text this morning, the Apostle Paul is starting with, in chapter 1, you need revelation. You need to understand this. There needs to, what is revelation? It's not some new thing. This is, you need the Holy Spirit to reveal to you who He is and how much He loves you. And He loves you too much to leave you how He finds you. So He begins to work and change all of that. But He needs your cooperation. Come on. He needs my cooperation. And so in these four or five chapters here, you'll find phrases like, don't, don't, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench. Don't try to extinguish the fire that He's trying to build inside of you. Amen. To yield to Him. To love Him. So I want you to do me a favor this morning. I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to ask him, Holy Spirit, will you forgive me for ignoring you when you're obviously at work in my life? I, I repent of that. Come on, just, just tell him, Lord, forgive me. I want to be more sensitive to your voice. I want to be more sensitive to the desire that you have for me. So Lord, please come in and fill my life have your way Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord if you pray that and you mean it I believe that God's going to answer that prayer come on if you pray it and you mean it God's going to respond to you contrast you know what contrast is it's it, it's it's well graphic designers they'll draw your attention to their message by contrasting size or color or shapes or types to try to get you to focus on what's in what their message is right my wife uh, years ago she had uh, she was having breathing issues and we couldn't we went to like four different doctors and they couldn't never could find out what it was and and she had multiple chest x-rays and they're like you know I had two doctors tell her she needed to quit smoking my wife's never smoked a day in her life and she finally got so sick I took her downtown to Houston Methodist and they they did a, a, an MRI and they said, we don't see anything, but we want to, we need you to sign this paper. We're going to do one with contrast because we thought there was one little spot here and, and they got to digging into it. They did contrast in there and both lungs were full of pneumonia. Like we've been to four doctors and none of them could figure this out. It's like, but the contrast made the truth. Come on, come on. And in, 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 in these texts, you know, the Apostle Paul is saying, don't, don't be this, but be like this. Don't be this. It's their contrast. It's God wants you to see your life for where it is because sometimes you're blind to the truth. Okay, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that can't see really. Hello? Sometimes, sometimes we're blind to these things, right? And, 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 
in, in verse, what was it? Chapter 4, verse 30. Do not bring sorrow. This is a New Living Translation. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way that you live. Wow. And friends, if, if, if we don't get anywhere else this morning, I want, I want to focus on this key right here. My life ought to please God. Amen. End of story. And God will use the contrast in my life in order to, to get me to the point where I understand how I can please Him. If, if, let's just, if you, guys, if you want to, I'm in the New Living Translation. Put up that five, chapter 5, verse 1 in Ephesians. He says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything that you do because, of his dear, because you are His dear children. Amen. How many of you here belong to God? Amen. All right. You're his own. Live a life filled with love. Anybody under conviction yet? Live a life filled with love. Oh, I love people. You love people that love you back. What about them that don't? Oh, well, that God, he's not talking about them. Oh, he, that's exactly who he's talking about. Faith isn't faith until it's put to the test. Submission is not submission until you're told to do something you don't want to do. Hello? And, and you haven't loved until you begin to, you haven't loved biblically until you begin to turn that love towards somebody that has offended you. Oh, come on, I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning. Remember, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's the one talking to you. All right. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Amen. I love Romans chapter 5. When I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. And when they're still hating on you and gossiping about you, you are to love them. All right. Holy Ghost is hollering at you. You need to say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. I hear you. Verse 3. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Look at this word. Such sins have no place among God's people. Now, let me give you a little historical context. This book is written to the church in Ephesus the epicenter of where the temple of the goddess Diana is, the goddess of fertility. Their whole culture is like our culture. You can't buy socks without a sexual image up there somewhere. I mean, they, everything they sell, they sell with sex. Come on, don't look at me pious like that. You know exactly. You know, you bunch of heathens. God's going to get you for looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the Apostle Paul is talking to people that are living. They have just been saved out of this mess. And he's telling them, I want to remind you, doesn't matter what that culture is promoting, you're not a part of that. He said, what did he say? These are not... Uh, 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 where, where was that? Verse 4, yeah. Oh, no, I hadn't got to verse 4 yet. That was verse 3. Such sins have no place among God's people. What sins? Oh, he's fixing to get you. Go ahead, hit that fourth verse. Now, look, what, whenever you feel like you need to come to an altar, you need to get it. Obscene stories. That's why we went to the New Living Translation. I forget what the King James says, but... I, 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 filthy talk or something like that. Obscene stories. How many of you remember some obscene stories that you were told before you got saved? Lord, liars? Ever stinking one of you liars. You know it's the truth. I, I mean, I can remember stuff. God help me. I told my mother a dirty joke when I was like 18 years old. I'm like, what kind of fool does that? Yeah, you too. Yeah, come on. You know, and, and, and yeah, we can laugh about this, but folks, let me tell you, there are people that are in the church that are still doing this. Now, you know, 
I'm redeeming the time that I wasted those 20 years of my life before I came to Christ. But some of you need to redeem yesterday. Come on, preach, pastor. Come on. Come on, pastor. Some of you need to redeem the time that you have wasted. And, and why do we do that? Because we want to be popular. We, wanna, we don't want nobody to think we're weird. Let me tell you something. You are strange if you're saved. You're peculiar. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. Did that cover all of it? All right. I don't need to explain any of that to you. Look at what he says. These are not for you. It's just as simple as that. It's as simple as you agreeing with God. These are not for you. Amen? Amen? It means you don't, you know, the, the box of chocolates is open and you know the ones that have the stripes on it and they're a little square. You know that's the caramels. That's for me. But the round one that has a, and you know that's coconut there, it's like, that's not for me. That's the picture here. You simply get to choose. You are a free moral agent. You are not a victim to your circumstances. You are not a slave to your sin. There is a power in the blood of Jesus that enables you to do exactly what he's told you to do. Hey! The devil is a liar. So the apostle Paul doesn't give you a three-point strategy for spiritual warfare. He simply says, that's not for you. Look at your neighbor telling them, that ain't for you. Come on. That ain't for you. Stop it. That ain't for you. Don't grab that one that's round and got them little squiggly lines on it. That's coconut, and that don't belong in a box of chocolates. <laughs> Glory to God. You want them caramels going to stick to your teeth when you bite into it. Come on. That's for you, baby. You want the good stuff. That's the grace of God. The grace of God, I'll preach a sermon like that. We'll, we'll get a box of chocolate. The grace of God's like a box of caramel. <laughs> Glory to God. Instead, instead of obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. Come on, guys. How many of you guys, you know what I'm talking about. At work, everybody's telling this stuff. They're talking like this. How many of you know that? Come on, hold your hands up so I can see you. I want to make sure I'm preaching to the right people. You know these folks, right? Here's what you do next time they're telling them jokes. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. Let me tell you, this book is practical. If you will put it to work, I guarantee you, you won't struggle with this stuff no more. <laughs> <laughs> man did you hear the one about the preacher went into the liquor store oh let me to glory to god let me tell you how good god. i was in church sunday and we had a message in tongues and interpretation my god was moved they look at you like a calf at a new gate what are you doing oh break it yeah they'll <laughs> the bugs will run for cover brother pat See, I didn't understand all this stuff until a few years ago, you know, when, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, had a, I had a guy in the church tell me, he said, Pastor, when, when you see guys standing around their phones and everybody's looking at the, at the one guy's phone and talking, they're not looking at deer pictures or sports. I didn't know. I didn't grow up like that. Hello? Some of you know too much about it. I love how you laugh now. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit. But you've run from that stuff. How do I combat that? When they pull out their phones and start showing you them videos and pictures. Oh, glory to God. I, let's talk about Jesus. Come on. They'll quit inviting you to their parties. And that's not a bad thing. Because when they're sick, 
when the doctor comes in and says they've got cancer. They're not going to run to their buddies with the pictures on their phone. They're going to run to you because they know there is something on the inside of you that has conquered death. My God. Hmm. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness. Verse 5, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world, whether they're greedy for money or greedy for your wife. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. Oh, oh that don't... Don't mean nothing, just a picture. You're, you're blind and stupid. And I mean that in the worst possible connotation. You have chosen to be ignorant. You are trying to fool yourself, but you're not going to fool God, and you sure don't fool me. It's a trap. You've got to run from this stuff. Come on, my, where's my young men? If, if, this, if, if this is a problem, you need to join the fellowship of the flip phone. Amen. You gotta, you gotta. Uh, Barney Fife will tell you. You gotta nip it. I'm telling you, you gotta put an end to this stuff. It will drag your soul to hell. It'll destroy your marriage. It'll enslave you. Yes. Oh, I don't do drugs. Yeah, but sex on them telephones is the biggest drug out there. Nah, but this is not a counseling class. That Pastor Emmanuel and Salome, they'll take you through that. <laughs> No greedy person, immoral, impure, greedy, will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. You're worshiping the wrong stuff. Am, am, am I taking this out of context? Not at all. Again, good hermeneutics will help you understand exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about. And this is exactly what he's talking about. And he's talking to people that have come out of it and some of them probably still struggling with their past. And he's trying to show them a way out. Because that's what the gospel does. It, gov it gives you a way out of your mess. Hallelujah to God. Verse 6, don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Verse 7, don't participate in the things these people do. What's he saying? Cut them off. Amen. 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 Offend them if you must. And to offend them, all you got to do is just begin to put this into practice. Just begin to worship God. Talk about how good he is. The bugs will run for cover. Verse 8, for once you were full of darkness. Come on, say, I used to be. Once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. Did we not just talk about, and we're talking about clear contrast. That's a redundancy, right? That, that we used to be dark, but now we're light. And God uses the contrast to get his message across. So if the church would quit living like the world, the world would know there is a God that is able to deliver me. But as long as we are in the same ditch as the rest of this thing, we'll never declare the true gospel. So you got to come out of it. 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 Come out. Cut it off. Hmm. Now you have light from the Lord. So, there's that conjunctive adverb. So, live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Men, I commission you today. Anybody want to be commissioned? All right, right. If, if, and I'm talking to men, but I'll, you ladies can join us too. I'm actually operating in, in willful ignorance because I work around a bunch of women and them some of the nastiest talking humans I've ever heard in my life. 
Come on, can I get a witness? All right, so if, if you want to be, if you want to, if you want to do something about this world, the darkness that is encroaching upon our nation, just, just stand up. I'm going to commission you. Who are you? Stand up. Thank you. I'm going to say, better be everybody, but I, I'm playing with this a little bit. I'm, I want you to think about it. Don't, don't be ignorant. All right. Raise, my, raise your right hand. Verse 10. Verse 10. There it is. I will carefully determine. Say it. What pleases the Lord? Verse 11. I will take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead... Now, read this before you say it. <laughs> I will expose them. Come on. I'm commissioning you to be messengers of the gospel. You want, you want people to be free from this stuff? You've got to expose them to it. All right, sit down. I just wanted to get your attention. Wake you up a little bit. What does that look like, Pastor. I don't know what it looks like in your context. Sometimes some of these folks you might have to pull off to the side. It means you be insensitive to the Holy Ghost. You be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And some of them you might have to pull off to the side and say, Honey, you know, we need to talk about some things. And some of them you just need to kind of just pull your, pull your little pocket New Testament out and take you a text in front of all of them and tell them. <laughs> I did that one time. They... They were in, I, I was a, a, a foreman for Brown and Root, and they were insisting that I give to the United Way. Well, the United Way was funding abortions, and I wasn't going to do it. And, they, and if you know it, how many, any old Brown and Rooters here? Yeah, yeah. Well, back in them days, in the 70s and 80s, if you, if you worked for Brown and Root, you were going to give to the United Way. You, whether you knew about it or didn't know about it, they're going to make sure it happens. And I... Like, I'm a foreman, and so they're expecting me to do this, to be, be a good leader. And I'm like, nope, ain't going to do it. <laughs> and they kept on. So first it was one of them, and then it was two of them, and then they got all the foremans and the superintendent and the secretary. <laughs> and I pulled my Bible out. I opened up to Romans chapter 1, and I read them. It says, not only the, them that do such things, but those that have pleasure in them that do it. I said, I read it to him. I told him, I said, I am not going to participate in this debauchery. I'm not going to fund abortions. I'm not going to uh, fund uh, homosexuality because the United Way was in all of that. I said, I will take my money, my fair share. I'll take it down to Star Hope. I'll bring you the receipt. No, 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 that's not good enough. We need you to give to the United Way. I said, see, it ain't about the giving. It's about the, the, the system, and I'm not a part of your system. I'm a part of another system. Come on, I got my preach on. I didn't make a lot of friends, but I, I marked out my territory. I'm not going to succumb to this, y'all. Are you hearing me? It might cost you a job to stand for Jesus. Hey, it costs all the disciples their lives, except for John. He just got a, a, a vacation, a lifelong vacation to Patmos because he couldn't die. He wouldn't die. It might cost you something, but it's worth the journey. Are you hearing me? All right, that, that's just kind of a run-in to what I'll finish tonight. Hit the next verse, please. It is shameful to even talk about the things that they do in secret, but their evil intentions will be exposed. Do you see how important it is for you and I to live for God? You know, we, always, we just want to run to the, the good part of chapter 5. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. For you do that, you've got to ruffle some feathers, honey. But it's, it's the light. See, in, unless you and I shine light, they will never know the truth. And let me tell you something. You're, the Spirit of God inside of you is going to ruffle their demons, going to upset their demons when you walk by them. Some people just hate you, and I've had people come to me. They, they, they hate me, but they've never even talked to me. Oh, yeah, they have. <laughs> what's in them don't agree with what's in you and you need to thank God for that 
All right. Next verse, please. For the light makes what? So, uh, Francis of Assisi said it this way. He said, the gospel should be preached at all time using words when necessary. <laughs> just, live, just live holy and you'll tick people off. Live holy and you will expose what's in them. Just live right. Come on, church. If the church would just live right, forget trying to get the Republicans and the Democrats to live right. How about you live right? If you will live right, everything will become visible. That's why it said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See the contrast. So, now we're on our text. So, in light of all of this, you understand what so means. It's a therefore. Be careful how you live. I want you today, this is as far as we're going to go with this this morning. We'll come back and finish it tonight. I want you to consider how you live in this present world. And it's why, it, 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 it's why I say, I, you know, I've heard people regurgitate what I say at, or up in this pulpit sometimes and Sometimes I think, well, you didn't get the, the whole message, right? I'm saying the church is the, is the reason for the problems we have in this nation because we've not lived the way God intends for us to live. If the church will live the way she's called to live, it will shift things in this culture. Come on. I, I mean, we are headed for a cataclysmic confrontation. And if you are afraid of the confrontation, honey, you you're going to be you're going to be a a a, 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 a not a victim, a, a a wounded person in battle, whatever we call them, casualty. Thank you. That's the word I was groping for. You're going to be a casualty in the war. Come on, I don't want you to be a casualty. I don't want you to be knocked out because of the of the heat that's coming. Listen, listen the heat's coming on us. And some of you ought to thank God for it because it's going to, it's going to mean your, your prodigals are going to see the difference. See, right now the prodigals don't see the difference between the church and the world. So they're like, what? <laughs> I'm okay. I, the same stuff I'm doing is in the, all in your church, pastor. Hello? But when the church lives right in this lost and dying world, the world can see the difference. And they'll come run into the light. That's my heart and my desire for you. Amen. Stand to your feet, please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sit back down. <laughs> we need to, we're going we're gonna to do communion this morning. Brother Buddy, would you, you grab a couple of guys back there. And Steve, if I could get you and uh, Brother, yeah, my, Terry. <laughs> Steve and Terry. You two come on up here. I think we might need two more. Brother, you two come on up here. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you just to bow your heads with me this morning. Thank you. If you guys would just line up right here behind me. Just come on here and close it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, most of you know I never throw communion at the end of a service just to, as a tagline, but... This communion service is meant to be really the amen to this service. That the, the focus today has been not on all of the negative, though we've had some fun with that and we've got serious with that, but the focus has been on the power of the blood of Jesus. And so I just want to invite you right now, if you're, if you're here this morning and you're struggling with this 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 chameleon lifestyle you you just kind of change your color based on your surroundings i want to pray for you god needs you to be light or dark he needs you to be hot or cold he needs you to be uh you know on fire for him or or just just go the other way but this middle ground this little soft mushy center has, has got to go away so, Father, I ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Guys, if you put your worship pads on, if you will. I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus.
for this congregation in this service on this day. Lord, those that are watching online, those that are in this building today, Lord, that there's a, we see the storm clouds rise and the battle is, is being set. And Lord, you're calling for your church to stand up and be counted. Holy Spirit, my prayer this morning is that as we, as we approach your communion table, we ask you, first of all, to forgive us of our sin. Lord, we ask you to come in and to wash us. And as that message in tongues and as the dream that Candy shared with us, Lord, there is a call, a very clear call, to come off the sidelines and to be a part of what you're doing in the earth. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll forgive me. And friend, if that's you, just join me. I pray that you forgive me for grieving your Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll forgive me for doing what I want instead of doing what you desire. I, I pray, Lord, that you will forgive me, but don't stop there. Let there come a washing. Come on, somebody, pray with me. Let there be a cleansing. Lord, 1 John 1, 9 says, If I'll confess my sin, you're faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray for that cleansing stream to flow this morning. And I pray, Lord, that the things maybe we've gotten away with in secret, that Holy Spirit, you won't let us get away with them anymore. That you'll confront us as, as, as your people, as your sons and your daughters. You'll confront us and you'll say, you're not supposed to do that. Don't choose the coconut. Go for the good stuff. Go for the things that I have in store for you. Go for my, 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 the life of my spirit, the, the well of the Holy Ghost, that, that river of living water that's intended to flow out of your life. Go for my favor my presence, my joy. So, Father, today we choose life and not death. And Lord, as we share this communion table, I pray that you will speak to every heart and to every life today. In Jesus' name. I'm going to share these emblems with these guys. They're going to pass them out to you. And if you'll hold them, we'll take communion together. But I want you to hear me and hear me well. You, you might be just stuck in your, in your addictions and in your pain. And you're like, I, I just don't know how to get out of this. Let me tell you something. God is not holding the bar up here and say and see if you can get over it. He did it all for you. And all he's waiting for you is just to say, Lord, I'm tired of living this way, this chameleon, this... Folks, you're living beneath your privilege. You say, Lord, come in. It's all you need to do. Lord, forgive me. Please come, cleanse me. He'll do that in a moment, in a second. I passed from death into life before I ever got out of my chair and walked down the aisle at 20 years old. The gospel that I'd heard was enough. And when I, before I ever stood up, the work was done. Oh, my God. I have never been the same. You won't either. There is a power that you have not yet tapped into. He's offering it freely to you. As we receive communion together as a family, I want you to avail yourself of what he's provided to you and for you. Amen. Shed. Amen. 
Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give us revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. What was accomplished in that blood sacrifice, the covenant that was cut at Calvary. Lord, reveal to this body the power of your blood, the, the purchase price of those stripes upon that, that bag. Thank you, Jesus. Era marra sera riara mondo che Onde se me che della Maria della Maria Alleluia Alleluia The blood that Jesus shed for me <laughs> way back, way back on Calvary. Hallelujah. It will never, never lose its power. Yeah. you join me just just worship him speak into yourselves in psalms hymns spiritual songs sing and make melody in your heart to him come on yeah. hallelujah hallelujah Come drink at my table, come eat of my bread. I have a place for you where all can be fed. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We have more. is what the Bible says it talks about wait <laughs> when you come together you need to wait for one another amen let me yeah you can get me next let me serve you oh okay okay come here guys let me serve you this is his body broken and his blood shed for you buddy his body broken and his blood shed broken body that shed blood. Brother, has everyone been served? Your turn. <laughs> no, you're going to give it to me, I thought. Yeah, thank you. We'll get this together. 
together in a minute. Thank you. Has everyone been served? Oh, I'm sorry. I left you out. It's a self-serve kind of thing, too. <laughs> Stand to your feet today. Now, here's the thing. This is... I'm glad that so many parts of our salvation, our walk with Christ, are individual and it's just me and Jesus kind of thing. But when we're in the church and we're sharing communion, this is not just about you and Jesus. We're a part of the body. So when I see little red spaces between somebody, I don't like that. So let's kind of get, get close to one another. You need some scriptural context for this? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said, Many are sick and weakly among you, and some of you are, some have even slept. They're, they're, they've died because they've not discerned the Lord's body. This is his body. We need to be aware that we're connected to one another because of his blood. Amen. If you're sick in body this morning, if you know someone that is, amen. I'm, I got Janora on my heart this morning. So I'm believing God that the stripes that were placed upon Jesus' back are producing right now life and health and healing. Come on. Just, just join me there. If you're sick or you know someone, take that bread, hold it up. Master, we thank you. Every stripe placed upon that precious back was put there that we might be made whole. Lord, it's a done deal. With his stripes, we were healed. And so, Father, we thank you for those that are in this room or those that we're believing for. And, Father God, your, your work has already been done. Let it be manifested in their mortal bodies is my prayer today. And we give you thanks for your body broken as a covenant sacrifice for us. In Jesus' name, let us eat together. The word says, Jesus, the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, uh, the, the cup, after they had supped, and he said, Take, drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Lord, I thank you that as that dream that was shared this morning, a vision of the rapture, one day we're all going to heaven and we're going to be with you. Lord, we share this covenant meal together in remembrance of what you've done for us. Thank you for the love that you showed at Calvary. In Jesus' name, let's drink together. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and give him praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you. Be thankful. Be thankful. Bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Now do me a favor. Turn around to your neighbors there. I want you just to just ask them, is there something I can pray with you about? Just let the love of Jesus flow in this house. We're going to have a meal back in the back together. Father, bless this food. And bless our fellowship in Jesus' name. Be back tonight at 6. God bless you. Mm -hmm.